probably my favourite story was we, we were very privileged, I think, to have bought the very last horse ever sold at the uh, old Newmarket complex, a horse called Nervous Nelly, a schnitzel filly that Arthur Mitchell led around the ring. It was very symbolic for us because, you know, we've had a long association with Inglis and my father did too. He bought horses back in the days when um, John Inglis was there and they had the they used to sit around on the hay bales or the, the whole hay bale ring under the fig tree. I was, you know, very proud to have been able to buy the last horse to go through the Newmarket complex. The Riverside complex was built and uh, we were going, coming into the classic sale for the very first time. We took um, the, our horses down a little bit earlier, I think, just to get, orientate them a bit. And we led the horse off and Mark Webster was there to greet me and uh, we had the first horse led onto the Inglis Riverside Complex for the classic sales. And Mark came up to me and shook my hands and said, welcome to Inglis, this, this, you've got the first horse coming onto the complex and, and you had the last one off the, <laughs> the, Inglis, old, one, off, yeah. off the old complex. So I thought that was uh, uh, pretty exciting. I hope it, it all goes very well for Inglis. I think they've, they're a wonderful organisation with a wonderful history. And I just hope that things will continue to progress the way they have in the past. Fiona Mylan is known as one of the best breakers and pre-trainers in New South Wales and her property Brisbane Meadows near Goulburn is home to two great value stallions if you want to breed your mare and race the offspring. Her knight exemplar is already throwing plenty of metropolitan winners in Sydney and he's joined by Philip Policina's Fastnet Express. Well, it's been now five years that you've had your business Brisbane Meadows and it's so great to see you with these two young stallions on the property, Knight Exemplar who's doing a great job and a new stallion in Fastnet Express. Look we've got a lovely new addition in Fastnet Express um, by Fastnet Rock out of a lovely group two winning mare My Tusker and obviously our, found, our foundation sire in Knight Exemplar by Xen Excel out of the group two winning Charmview. Um, I think they balance each, each other well. Night Exemplar being more the speed, speedy type, speedy line of sire and um, Fastnet Express going off, you know, looking at his pedigree and the type, more of a staying line, sort of 1400 up to, well, there's Melbourne Cup winners in his pedigree, so we're hoping we'll go down that path. And it is great to be offering value stallions. I mean, there are a lot of mare owners in this district in particular that really, you know, need, need these horses with these great, you know, fast net rock, exceed and excel sort of pedigrees. We mainly are obviously are targeting your breed to race clientele. Knight Exemplar obviously is doing a great job already winning two highways and we hope to go down the same path with Fast and Express. It's Phil the Knight in front. And it's been such a great ride already. Phil the Knight and Look Only, the full brother and sister that you bred yourself winning those highways. Tell me about that because that is such a thrill. Yeah, well Look Only um, I actually sold as a yearling um, but she was bred here, broken in, pre-trained and spelled. Um, Phil the Knight, he's he's our um, golden boy at the moment. So yeah, we we do own him, and it, it was an absolutely a great thrill. I think I lost my voice afterwards and couldn't speak after winning the highway. It was a, it, it was amazing. So um, look, they've they've brought a lot of joy to the clients. Yeah, there's a lot to look forward to in knowing that he, you know, we've, we've got a good stallion. Knight Exemplar gets quickly on terms on the outside. And well, he won twice Knight Exemplar, um, as you said, son of Exceed and Excel. He was close to horses such as Rebel Dane as a three-year-old, second to Jolly Bay and the Roman Consul, ahead of your song, and then close up fourth to Nikita in the Group 1 Coolmore Stud Stakes. So he was right up there and going as a two-year-old and three-year-old. He was, and we're actually glad in a way that he, um, he only just missed out on that Roman Consul because had he won it, he probably wouldn't be here. And we wouldn't have had the opportunity to breed him, he'd be at a, you know, 
much more commercial stud. He retired sound, he's a very, um, very well conformed horse. I think there's no doubt that there's, there's good two year olds to come. And his, his mother charmed you, she won the Winter Stakes, which is now the Group 1 Tats Tiara too. Um, and a full sister, Laquia, who was a three time stakes place getter, including the Melbourne Cup Carnival. So the family itself also is continuing on on mum's side too. It's a very good producing line. Um, and I think that's an important thing to look for in any pedigree, whether it's a mare pedigree or a sire pedigree, you want to see that they can produce. Um, Charmview's been a great mare. I think the majority of her foals have won. So yeah, no, lovely to see a nice producing line. Fosnan Express arrived uh, last year, first season last year, um, through our lovely client Philip Policina. Once Philip informed me and told me about the stallion, I think it was an easy, easy choice to accept accept the possibility of standing him. That Dan line, Sir Dan Horlicks, who was an absolute superstar, the Kiwi champion who won the Japan Cup and produced Brew that won the Melbourne Cup, Fia Machino, who was a great weight for age sort of star. And he's also the full brother to Gamekeeper, who's recently won the Adelaide Guineas. So again, there's a lot that's improving on his page. There is, and I think there might be a bit more improvement yet to come. It was a very exciting day when we saw Gamekeeper win the Guineas and then follow up a fortnight later, winning down Flemington over 2,000 metres carrying 62 kilos as well. That was a big effort um, and I think that made it four wins in a row. Given the performances of his brother, um, obviously across with Fastnet Rock as well, there's a good option there to breed anything from 1,200 metres um, to 3,200. A uh, bit more of a staying, staying pedigree, um, which I think is a great option and it balances the two stallions out really nicely. And his mother, my Tusker, is the grand dam of the Queensland Derby winner, Mr Quickie, who beat the Melbourne Cup winner, Val and Declare, in that derby last year and was also third to Gatting and Mystic Journey in last year's Group 1 Maccabi Diva Stakes as well. So the family, you know, it goes right down through the page. It really does. Um, there's a lot of back, black type through the family. You want to see producing families um, and Fast and Express certainly has that at the top level, absolutely littered with Group 1s and Group 2 wins. So Philip, tell us how did you come to stand Fastnet Express and, and the reasons behind him being at stud? Well, it was by accident to some degree. We, we bought a racehorse, uh, uh, Anthony Cummings and I, we were at um, Magic Million and uh, we bought this Fastnet Rock, $250,000 yearling and we thought there was so much of Fastnet Rock in him that uh, we thought we'd have a great opportunity to maybe win some races. Sadly, he got injured. My business partner, Anthony Alafachi and myself, we bought uh, all the partners out. And then uh, he met Fiona and I uh, spoke to her about this horse and she was uh, agreed to take him on and uh, we're very excited to be here at Brisbane Meadows. And you're supporting this fellow as well. You have your own mares? Yes, I will. Uh, we sent four mares to him last year and we hope to do the same this year. I just can't wait to see those, those first season five you know we're very excited about it. So to have this breed to race sort of stallion it gives people so much opportunity to breed their own racehorse. Here, here and I, I have a lot of friends that actually only breed to race and I've actually started doing that. We're very excited and we can't wait and we urge a lot of these uh, lower end owners that may not wish to go to some of the big stallions come over and join us come and have a look at him and uh, and if you if you like what you see you know send us a broodmare. So look, he's a lovely, big, strong horse. He's very boisterous, very big, strong stallion. You know, he's what you want to see from, from a stallion. But one thing we can vouch for is very fertile. He's very much fast net rock. He's got very typical Dane Hill head. Um, he's very well conformed, very strong, very powerful. So we'll be expecting some big, strong foals from him this year. As a pre-trainer and a breaker as well, I mean, you've worked with some fabulous horses such as First Seal and some other really top class horses too. But you also bred Roman, who did really well, the, the little Roman Emperor Mercury Lady that we filmed as a foal bouncing around the paddock. So, you know, it, it, it's great to try and breed these breed to race type horses, isn't it? Look, it's good on a personal level with those small successes that, you know, we're heading down the right path. It's great for our clients as well who have been involved and have been, you know, stuck by us. It gives them confidence and hope and, you know, gives us a lot to look forward to as well. So great to see options for breeders who can't afford the higher service fees but still have access to great bloodlines to breed their own winners. Coming up on Bread to Win, Darley's Alastair Pulford in Arrowfield Studs, the horse who made you love racing. Oh,